Hey everyone, Zoraz here from Not Casuals. Today, bringing you my ultimate Genshin Impact returning player guide updated for 2024. Now, I just came back to the game recently after playing from the beta all the way to 1.4. And when I returned, I noticed there is a lot of new content and I did not really know where to start. So this video is going to be focused on letting you know exactly what you should be doing and prioritizing when you're coming back to the game and where to get the most value for your time as well as what is important to focus on and what you can keep for later and not have to stress about. The first thing I want to talk about is resin. Now for those of you who played very early into the game, we used to have a limit of 120, it is now 160. This means that it takes about 21 hours to get a full refresh if you get to zero and it is one of the only mechanics in this game that is time gated meaning that if you don't do it, it goes to waste. So if you go to 160, every minute afterwards is wasted where you could be getting resin. So this is really still the most important thing in the game. If you can log in once every 21 hours and spend all your resin or at least most of it, it will be the only thing you really have to do in this game that you cannot do later in the future. So this is really your number one priority no matter what. Now the only other real thing that is sometimes going to go to waste in this game is going to be limited time events. So for example right now we do have quite a few of them as it tells you here the timing so 11 days for this one to be done. Other than these two types of things so resin and time gated events there is really not much else in this game that requires you to log on every day or log on at all. You can take really a lot of time in between games as long as you spend your resin every 21 hours and you do the events when they're up everything else is pretty much optional and you can do anytime you want at your own pace now the only exception to this is going to be the spiral abyss so there is really nothing new uh, from before no matter when you played back in the days it is going to be the same as it was the first eight levels are doable once and then you get the rewards and that's it you can never do them again and then the other levels here, level 9 to 12, are going to reset every two weeks. It tells you kind of here at the bottom. And the floor 12 is basically the hardest floor in the game and the one that is going to take you a lot of effort to do this because uh, there's level 95 monsters and there are some of the hardest monsters in the game. So you do need to plan your team around it. This is one of the only other source of reward that is time gated and it's every two weeks. It is the hardest content in the game and there is many players who played this game for years without even touching any of these four so it is not mandatory at all it is just extra rewards that you can get here if you are into the competitive aspect of genshin impact for floor 12 specifically now lastly the commissions as you might remember which are basically like daily quests which you can do in any of the regions that you have unlocked if you choose so will give you a little bit of reward and a lot of XP every day. So this is something that you can do every single day to get extra rewards as well. So it is a very beneficial thing to do as well, but there is no necessity to it. It just gives you extra stuff for your account. It doesn't hinder you if you don't do it. And there have been many new ways of doing this. So as you can see here, there is a, a way of getting these encounter point stage reward, which basically is instead of doing the commission quest, you will do a list of different activities that are completely uh, different. So Arcan Quest, Story Quest, War Quest, any kind of quest, collecting lost Arculi, collecting different items in Dragon Spire, for example, or other zones, opening chests and playing in events will all count towards giving you commission. So you will not have to do these four quests going in different zones in the map. You can simply just do the other stuff like the quest and the chest and all that stuff, and it will complete for you allowing you to not have to waste so much time going to all these zones one at a time and this is going to be again once a day so when you log in to do your resin doing this at the same time is a good idea and you can get all of this done very quickly without having to do anything else so it is one of the best way to get daily rewards and not have to play a consistent amount of times if you are limited in the amount of times you can play now when you are coming back to genshin impact as a returning player your only real priority will be Archon Quest. So, of course, you can do any quest and they all give different amounts of reward. But the Archon Quests are the ones that are going to allow you to continue in the story. Now, as you can see, I am in Chapter 3, which is Sumeru, the third zone that came out after Inazuma. And it is a quest that simply is elevating the story and continuing everything that you have known so far. 
And as you can see here, I also have a quest for the Chasm, which is a secondary zone that is also part of the Arkham quest. So these quests are giving you the most amount of rewards as well as continuing your story. But you do not need to do any of these quests to unlock any of the new zone except Inazuma. So in order to go here, which is the Inazuma area, you will need to complete your Archon quest. I won't spoil exactly what happens to you, but it will be happening mostly in Leeway in this area from the ship where Beidou is, which you would have seen at the beginning as it was part of the release. And this is going to be what brings you all the way to Inazuma. You do need to do a bit of Arkham Quest to unlock more of the islands. And I haven't even unlocked this one uh, as of now. And this will be through another world quest related to the Arkham Quest. Uh, so as you can see, this is the only way you'll be able to unlock this zone. And you will need to unlock this zone as there are a lot of new bosses with materials that you have no other way of getting. So doing the Arkham Quest until at least Inazuma is going to be your number one priority when you are coming back to the game. It will allow you to do basically all the content in the game that way. Now for other zones like the Chasm, Sumeru and anything else in Fontaine that came out, you can simply walk there without needing any quest and you will be able to reach and do all of the bosses. There is nothing so far that I haven't been able to do or farm. You will need to walk around a lot. Uh, luckily, I did have some waypoint, even though I had never ever been here in my life. Some of these teleport waypoints were already unlocked for me when I zoomed in like this. And there was also some in this zone here. So just make sure to look around. Maybe some of the Arkham quests do unlock them for you. I'm not exactly sure why I did have them. Maybe it's just for returning players. In any case, check around. If not, well, you'll just have to walk and fly all the way up here until you reach the zone that you want. And as you see, I have plenty of places that I haven't explored myself. There is really no rush to do any of this. You simply decide what you want to do. Really, unlocking Inazuma through the Arkham Quest is the best thing to do and the only thing you really, really need to do. Everything else you can take your time, but the Arkham Quest obviously is still the best way of getting a lot of reward as well as getting through the story, which is the most interesting part of the game for many players. So it should still be your priority to do the Arkham Quest so you can catch up on everything that's happening and so that you don't spoil yourself when you do some events in Fontaine, for example, then if you've done the Arkham Quest, you will know what's happening. Now, if you are ever like me in a situation here where one of your Arkham Quests is saying that it cannot be done, you cannot track it, like you cannot navigate to it, because some other quests are needed or something is happening in a world quest where the characters in the quest are being busy in your other quest. So this will be easy to see. If you click view detail here, it will tell you which quest you should be going to do. And it will basically just give it to you exactly in your quest log. You will see exactly what they want you to do. So you can come here, view detail, tell me, okay, I need to do this. And it tells you what you have to do exactly. And it guides you. So this is something that is very useful if you're stuck. Just remember that you can always do this and the game will help you sort it out. Now, if you are a returning player, you will also get the Stellar Reunion event, which appears on any account that hasn't played the game in a few weeks. This event will give you a lot of free reward as well as some guidance. So it is very important to do the maximum of what you can in this event. I have made an entire video simply focused on this event, which I will link in the description and in the comments below. But in just a recap, you get a few things in this event. One of them is a daily login that gives you about 500 primer gems. And the other part of it is that it will make it so that every day your first basically resin spent on artifacts or XP or Mora will be doubled. So you get a double drop four times a day for the duration of the event up to, I think, 28 times. You can do this because the event lasts about two weeks. So this is one of the things that this event gives you a lot of basically free resin value for playing the game. It also gives you a place to get keys to unlock story quests, which are optional quests about characters that give you reward and give you story of that character. And you also get an event through the Stellar Reunion that will guide you through doing your Arkham Quest. It will let you know which are the next parts of your Arkham Quest and will give you extra reward for doing it. It's basically just guiding you as what you should be doing next in the storyline and giving you reward for it. Lastly, this event also gives a few other things such as exploration reward for exploring the next areas that are on your list. Currently, for me, it was 
Fontaine. So the most of Fontaine that I would explore, the more reward that this event were to give me. Now, next, if you come here in your characters, of course, you will have a list of characters like me. A lot of them old, some of them new. You also will be able to get more in the future. And there are also going to be some free characters that you will get for just logging in. So do make sure to go around and check out like this event page and see if you have anything that's being given to you for free as well as you know just do whatever you can here that has extra reward like these test runs for example and things like that now if you are in this situation you have a look at your characters and you obviously look at which one you used to play before and which one you are currently playing you will focus on which one you want to build next for example so let's say you choose a character that is new like for example one of these characters that you get given for free and then you want to ascend them and it will show you here basically all the materials that you will need now some of these materials you will be like i've never seen in my life and it is normal because they drop in a font and zone which is where this character is from you will also notice or remember that when you are upgrading your character's abilities or their talents so that they are higher level you will need some materials that are pretty special these are from bosses in the game and you will remember that if you have done any of the game in moonstat or leeway there was quite a few bosses around so for example storm terror here which obviously gives his reward for certain characters level of materials you had the same here with the wolf and you had also other ones in the game now the new zones also all have their own bosses but as you can see as i have not explored everything yet there are some bosses that don't appear on my map whatsoever so the fontaine boss is not there the same for sumeru i cannot see the fight i don't even know where it is so there is a trick so that you can farm materials for the heroes that you want to level up even though you haven't unlocked the bosses and this will be through the adventure guide which is a very useful place to get basically anything done and have guide on what you should be doing or where you should be finding these things so as we talked about earlier domains to farm different materials they're all going to be here and some of them obviously change every day the material that they give this is nothing new you also have artifact domain that obviously are all here and then when you go down to a place here you will see some of them are undiscovered so these are some of the places that you will need to unlock if you want to get the artifacts that these domains contain or the town material here and then you simply click here and it will tell you exactly where to go and you might have to do some kind of war quests around to unlock these domains sometimes they're already just there you just walk in sometimes you have to do a quest around the area to unlock them so this will always depend but the thing here that is the most beneficial is the trounce domain so these are the boss domains as you can see storm terror is here golden house is the boss from leeway and then there's more that i don't even know what these bosses are this is not spoiling you what the bosses are but doing the fight will definitely spoil you so this is where you can go and click on these and basically it will allow you to go into the boss fight and charge you the resin accordingly and let you get these special materials that come only from these bosses so this is going to be your best way to catch up you need certain things artifact domains and stuff you can come here track them however you want and then if you need special boss materials you can come here and do them through this book even if you haven't unlocked the content in the game so this is a very very massive tip and these only can be done once a week as you can see here it refreshes every week on sundays so this is going to be important to spend your resin on there every single week as some of these materials are very rng some meaning that you will farm it for weeks and never get one of the three that you need and it can take quite a long time to get as much as you need and this is required to level up the talents of your heroes so this is something you really should be doing and must be doing as much as you can when you can and see how many of these rewards you can get every week these fights are increasingly hard they're very really harder than the first fights for example storm terror is a joke but the last few bosses take a specific team and strategy so you should be looking up guides on them if you're having a hard time but this is going to be your best way to catch up is using the book and the trans domain here to navigate and go do the bosses that you need now while you are in the adventure book there is as i said a lot of stuff here that will help you so do make sure to navigate it and explore everything that is here and see what you can do and if you go enemies here you will be able to navigate through all the enemies in the map and this will let you know where the material they drop and if you need specific materials and then you will be able to navigate to them in the map if you do need that material while some of them obviously are locked behind quests but 
majority of them can be found this way and this will really just be useful these are not bosses they don't cost risen they simply are around the map in many areas and when you need their materials it's hard to farm them so this will allow you to farm specifically the enemies that you need for the materials that you need so this is one way to uh, navigate and find materials that you can do also here this guide is a way of kind of like guiding you through the game it will basically you know give you rewards for completing arcan quests and these rewards are very very good and let you level up artifacts as well as giving you some free wishes so these are massive reward as well as here these are specific quests that are going to unlock things for your account so this is going to be basically the quest that i think unlocks fishing in the game which is a new feature i haven't done it but if i click here it will get me into uh, the quest log and tell me what quest i need to do in order to unlock this feature specifically and so here unlocks another game mode of function unlocks a new foe unlocks a story quest so these are all things that you can use to navigate it will basically guide you to where you need to do now if you are a new player there are new game mechanics that you will have never seen like this one for example which i had no idea how to do this obviously is uh, something new that came with Sumeru. There is a very simple way of finding out about all of the new mechanics and it is this button up here. This is going to be the tutorials for all the stuff in the game. So obviously if you go like all the way down you will see the ones that you've already seen. So this is giving me a lot of tips about the new Fontaine stuff, how the puzzles work, how you have to make it uh, you know, basically work. This also has all the boss fights and it kind of tells you a little bit of the information about how to defeat it it gives you clues and ideas about how it works you can really find a lot of tutorial here about all parts of the game and here it basically tells you how to defeat some of the uh, mobs in fontaine you have other stuff that will be for different zones like sumeru and stuff and this is just really just giving you all the information you need in order to understand how these mechanics work so this is very useful for new players because if you have a puzzle you're like how the hell do i do this well this is where you're gonna find out you can search and type uh, so, you know, if I type crab, well, this will gonna tell me. And if I type any of the new bosses name and stuff like that, it will have some of this information, of course. So this is something you should be looking into. There is a lot of information here. Uh, you know, there is a lot of things that you might not know how to do, like collecting wood. Well, this is where you're gonna find this information. Now, of course, uh, the wish system, this is nothing new. If you haven't played this game in a long time, you will notice that you now have two five star character banners. It used to be only one. So these are the current banners and these are limited. So for example, Navia, who is a new hero, well, she just came out a few weeks ago and this banner is going to last for six days. And then when this banner disappears, we won't see a Navia banner for multiple weeks. Sometimes it takes months before you see some characters. So this is one of the limited part of the game, but you can clear every single piece of content in this game easily with four star characters. So it is not a necessity, you just simply have to go for the characters you are interested in that look fun and look cool. You also have the weapon banner, which is the same as it used to be, except that there is now a pity system, meaning that you will choose one of the weapons here. And if you go two times where you get weapons that are legendary from this wish, which are not the weapon that you put in this here, well, it will for sure guarantee you that you get it the next time. So it is like a self pity system, uh, but it is needing you to spend a lot on one banner while the weapons are up if you really want to have it to get three legendary out of a banner can cost thousands and thousands of primal gems and hundreds of these fates uh, so this is usually the banner that only people who spend a lot of money roll on if you do not spend a lot of money uh, 95 percent of the time you will not touch this banner and you will focus on the other character banners instead lastly the standard wish which was something that existed back in the days uh, is basically the same this one includes a lot of the characters that are not new so you'll see here the list of what it includes it has some of the new characters but also you know Kitching, chi chi gene these are all the luke mona these are all the very old characters uh, old five stars from the beginning of the game so when i played these were the only five star characters but obviously now things have changed uh, so this is the banner that you will never use except for using your free fates when you get free fates you use them here because there's nothing else to do with them and you will sometimes get some of the old content over time. Uh, but you will never spend Primal Gems or buy these otherwise in any other capacity unless you get them for free or very cheap. Now, if you're a returning player like me, you won't have access to a lot of Dendro characters, of course, because Dendro is a new element that came out in Sumeru. But Dendro is a very, very strong element in Genshin Impact. 
It is much stronger than many people realize and you can build teams around Dendro that will carry you exceptionally well in the game, especially the early game. So if you are not going to be rolling on a banner with a Dendro character and if you're not going to use the free uh, Dendro character that they give you, which is uh, Kole, which you're going to get for free in one of the events, this is going to be your best option for a Dendro character. It is going to be the Traveler. Now, if you remember well, the Traveler can attune to any element in the game and Dendro is no exception. Sadly, almost every single element that this character can attune to is a very, very bad character. He is not good at really any element other than Geo, which is still meh. But Dendro, he is actually a very, very good Dendro character. He has very, very powerful abilities that basically put a big mushroom on the map and then every other character can interact with it and get reactions out of it. So he doesn't need to be played or on the field or even really very strong for that matter as much as you simply just need to unlock Dendro. So if you are returning and you do want to have a Dendro, all you need to do is unlock any area in this Sumeru region and then just go to a statue of the seven. And then when you go with the traveler to one of these statues, you will get the option to talk to it and see here it does say resonate with Dendro. And as you can see here, resonate with Dendro is one of the options. You simply do it and then you will see your traveler will now be a dendro traveler with dendro abilities so this is currently the easiest and the best way to get a very decent dendro character and it requires very minimal investment then you will of course have to try and level up a bit of the talents here and make sure he has an artifact set equipped there is dendro sets that are very good for him as well as constellation you will unlock through doing the arcan quest as well as turning in the uh, dendroculus to the statue of the seven itself which is something that is my next point really this is one of the really best way to get a lot of rewards and primal gems in this game obviously you will find these dendroculus the same way you found any other in the past they just simply are around the map and they appear as little stars on your mini map you will see hundreds of them they are in fontaine for the hydroculus they are in sumeru for the dendroculus they are also electroculus i think in uh, in Azuma, so there's a lot of them and this is one thing you can do uh, obviously over time and you'll see here is where i'm gonna get the constellation for the dendro traveler so this is one of the things that you can spend your time on because it is one of the best source of primal gems in this game for free simply for exploring and gathering these these go up to level 10 so you'll get these over and over and you get you know a lot of reward from this as well as xp so this is one of the things you can focus on as a returning player. Now, the next thing I'll talk about is going to be the alchemy stone uh, we can find here in Moonstad, which obviously is the one as before. This is the crafting bench. This is where you will be able to craft a lot of stuff, including turning lower level materials into higher level materials for character levels, uh, talents and weapons and stuff, which is not new. This is something that always existed before. There's also some potions and stuff that always existed before, as well as things like the portable waypoint and other similar items, which these are not as new. For example, this happened in, I think, Dragon Spine. But there is obviously always new stuff that is going to be added here over time, where it will allow you to do some conversions that weren't allowed to before. So, for example, you can convert some of the boss materials into... Uh, you know other bosses material here so you'll take this one it'll this one will become this one and then you know this one become this one so you can do this which is very good because as you can see i have 13 of this and i have zero of these so if i needed this this was one way to convert it though it does use this consumable which is not something you can get unlimited you only get it from some of the challenges uh, the bosses themselves basically when they drop it uh, so this is going to be one other way to get some of these materials that you haven't had before, as well as these uh, four star weapons materials. So you can craft the new four star weapon materials in the future when you unlock them, uh, I think through the Arkan quest or simply by finding the recipes and stuff like that. Um, you will be needing some of these. So there's a lot of stuff in this store. I'm not going to go through all of it, but this is one of the things you can do. There is also a completely new system here, which is called Artifact Strongbox. Now, this will allow you to take some of your artifacts from any any artifacts it really doesn't matter so for example i have a lot of viridescent veneer which is an old artifact set from back in the days well i can go here and take a lot of these artifacts and turn them into uh basically other artifacts so let's say i've chosen all these ones i don't like any of them uh so here i am i've put six of them here i'm gonna get two artifact strong box for any of these sets so of course there is a lot of sets here that we are 
being before this is not anything new it's from the beginning of the game but every expansion or basically every new zone they've added new ones so as you can see here you have some of the artifacts set that came out later on in the game these are from zones like Sumeru, Inazuma as well as eventually Fontaine might be added here uh, so if you do want some of these artifact sets, for example, this is one of the best sets in the game. Well, you can come here and transform six old artifacts into two boxes of new artifacts, which are going to give you random artifacts here, as you can see. So it is one way of recycling your old artifacts, and you are going to get new artifacts this way. So this is a completely new mechanic that is very good for older players like us, as you can specifically turn all of your old stuff that you didn't need into new stuff that you don't even have access to yet or you haven't farmed ever so you're going to be able to create some new character builds without having to farm for months worth of resin so that's about it with a returning player obviously you will be focusing on doing arcan quest and doing the daily commission resin and events and stuff like that other than that you really just go through any characters you want and decide which one you want to build next which one you want to focus on do you want to make your you know older characters that you had at level 90 but didn't have all their talents maxed out well go farm the materials that you need for it you can see here or you want to take a character that you used to play but didn't get all the way to level 90 well what do you need to ascend them here you go it will tell you and you go and farm it with your resin every day you just choose whatever you want to do and you will just farm work on these characters spend your resin on these things as i said when you are going to be looking for characters improvement the book up here this will give you everything you need it will tell you exactly where to farm certain materials that you need for certain characters also boss domains here for the materials that you need for them artifact or weapon upgrade materials here everything can be navigated quite easily in this game as long as you know where to look you will be able to find everything you need and the game will guide you pretty well on all of that stuff now the one thing that you can also do every day that is very beneficial will be obviously talking to this lady here you can get your daily commission reward and eventually adventure rank reward when you level up your adventure rank for your account as well as of course the expeditions now there's many more zones with many more rewards and they have added a lot of features that make this entire thing much more easy than it used to be. Uh, so this is some of the stuff that you can be doing every day, as well as coming to these crafters guys and crafting, you know, materials. So if you come here, you'll see that you are able to make some weapon enhancement material by converting some gems or some chunks that you've gathered, crystals and stuff like that. So this hasn't changed. There is simply just more ways and more materials now that will let you do it. And this is also where you're going to be able to craft some of these new weapons as well as some of the old weapons eventually when you get the recipes for them. I would also suggest you take a look in your inventory. This will obviously allow you to see all your weapons. And if you want to upgrade some weapons, you can also come here and see what you need to ascend them and refine them if you have duplicates. And you will also find that there is a lot of stuff in here that might have changed or look a little bit different. For example, there's a lot of food and new foods, which I recommend you look into and craft because it gives you a lot of buffs for some of the fights. And if you're a returning player and you're weaker in some of the boss fights, these might help you a lot. As well as you will find if you go here that there is gadgets now. None of them do a massive difference in the game, but some of them do have a pretty important part to play. This is where you have the housing system where you can build your own houses and stuff, which has no impact on the game, but does give you some reward. You also have a lot of these little items that have specific quests or for example this one will place uh, and launch like fireworks which you can see here uh, so this is you know pretty basic stuff but pretty fun stuff portable waypoint can be basically what it is you put it down and it's a waypoint that you can use and you also have these items that allow you to stack up some items for food and stuff so there's a lot of little things and you don't have to go through all of it because it's kind of the fun of it is exploring and seeing how it works if you ever go here and don't understand exactly what things do well there are tutorials again about it and you can always go into like i said your help here and type it here and like for example nre this is one of the items well this will tell you what it is and explain to you kind of how it works so everything you need can be found through this system or through looking around and everything else there is the internet for obviously there's plenty of guides on how to do everything in this game as it's been a very popular game for many years now hopefully this guide was useful to you if you have any question or if you have any tip you want to share with other returning players make sure to look in the comments section of this video as i'm sure many players will be sharing their tips or i will personally be answering any questions you have in there i thank you guys for watching and hope to see you on my next videos